What? Oh! Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. To the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests, and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. It even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. And she was the world's greatest detective. Finkelstein residence. Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Richard? Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. I understand that, but... Well, yes, of course, but... No, no, no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying.
You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Fine. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury. Good day, sir. Boring? Predictable? Bah! Well, if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton. But today was different, and nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. Her skin was pale, her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? No, no, no! Never move the victim! Mrs. LeClue, she's doing it again. Jenny LeClue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. But he's doing it wrong! As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time, until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. LeClue. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body? Who can postulate how she met her demise? Ooh, uh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor. And cracked her head open. Like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really, how can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually, you're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded murder. Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh yes, there is. It was murder. And I can prove it. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data. And finally... Deduce the real cause of death. A waste of perfectly good coffee. Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. <laughs> Smells like burnt matches. The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Approximately eight sizes too big and covered in mud. Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy 
and quite uncomfortable. But her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to the world and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. I've seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. How do I know the victim didn't slip? quite add up. Let me give this some more thought. The victim's boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. It smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! Also found in common garden fertilizer. The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead! Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints in an unshattered mug? She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is the story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny? The gardener, enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? Is this going to be on the test? Remember, class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. The students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumbolt. To learn. I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go, I have something for you. Cool! What is it? 
If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The LeCruz didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. journal. To Jenny, there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth their salt would do. She decorated it. A new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. I love it. Thanks, Mom. Jenny, I wanted to talk about, um, to say, uh... Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mum was hesitating. What could be causing her to act so out of character? arms. Furrowed brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get... Emotional. I've really gotta go. No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask for help. It must be something very important. Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve? I've misplaced the students' essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. Wow, the case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm or just really good at ignoring it. Okay, Mom. I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. Don't push your luck. Please? Hmm. Okay. Yes! Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. This again? Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge.
Late again? What are you up to? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? All right, let's find these papers and get out of here. One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood the textbook recommends. Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet? What's the matter? Lost your funny bone? Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real-life experience. And Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. Do not touch. Hmm. Someone must be running an experiment. Gross. Pretty soon it's gonna sprout legs. one of the students' term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. Mom must have put them behind the chalkboard. you. Time to get out of here. Jenny looked around the room one last time. Was she ready to leave?
Okay, so she wasn't really dead. That would be silly. No, Jenny was alive and well and ready for another perfect day in Arthurton. What a mess. I should investigate. Jenny had an instinct for sorting treasure from trash. To the untrained eye, this was just a discarded piece of an old postcard. But to Jenny, it was a mystery waiting to be solved. I should keep my eyes open for any other pieces. The notice board was awash with flyers, personal ads, and the occasional piece of gum. I'm amazed anyone can find anything on here. Fortunately, Jenny had a useful trick to use in a situation like this. Mom always says, a great detective eliminates the noise. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. I wonder if anyone else reads this junk. Hold on. What's this? Oh no, they've extended curfew hours, again. 9 p.m. to sunrise? That's ridiculous. But necessary. Power outages had become a regular occurrence in town. It was dangerous to be wandering around after dark. It won't be long before we need a permit to go out at all. back there. Well, I was pruning, but then I discovered this cerulean bugberry bush. Discovered? These bushes are all over Arthurton. Actually, this is an incredibly rare bloom. There's nothing rare about Arthurton. I beg to differ. Arthurton has many beautiful and exotic plants. Really? Like what? Mushrooms with eyes that glow in the dark? Berries that emit a bioluminescent mist, and flowers with nectar as sticky as super glue. Where? I've never seen any of those things. Well, believe me, they do exist. I've had the pleasure of seeing them up close. That's one of the privileges of working for Dean Strousberry in his greenhouse. Anyway, I should get back to work. I want everything to be perfect for the Dean's retirement celebration.
signs and decorations adorned the entire campus. A party to celebrate the Dean's impending retirement. Left! Left! I said left, damn it! What part of left are you having trouble with? My left or your left? My left. Obviously I mean my left. Why would I mean your left? So you want me to move it the other way? Yes. Nothing would make me happier. If you're not careful, we're gonna have Brown's brains all over the floor. They seem... busy. I should probably lead them to it. Hello, Mr. Strasbury. How are you today? A jolly gentleman. The Dean was often seen shaking hands and kissing babies around town. He's also Mom's boss. But more than that, he was her loyal friend. What do you think, Jenny? The Dean had dedicated his life to Gumbolt, and the townspeople had spared no expense in their tribute to him. Quite a striking resemblance, Mr. Strasbury. It's a scary thing, Jenny. Retirement. Great excuse for a party, though. <laughs> what will you do when you're no longer the Dean? I've been trying not to think about it. This place won't be the same without you. Things change, Jenny. Time marches on, and we must do our best to adapt. It's going to be difficult, but I'm sure we will get through it. What do you mean, we? Do you think they made my belly too big? It's probably just the perspective, Mr. Strausberry. <laughs> you are a clever one, Jenny LeClue. Speaking of which, have you been practicing your detective skills? Have I? Of course, always. Well then, I have a challenge for you. I bet you can't guess what I ate for breakfast. At last, a real challenge for Jenny. A fiendishly difficult puzzle that would take all her wits to solve. Well, okay. Anything for you, Mr. Strausbury. Oh, how wonderful. But first, I need to ask you a few questions. be dandruff. He has no hair. I have a hunch it's powdered sugar. Looks like he accidentally put a spoon in his pocket instead of his pen. Got a coffee stain on it. A thick bundle of note cards poked out of the Dean's pocket. What's he keeping so close to his chest? You've been making a lot of notes, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, I was intending to make a speech on Saturday. Why have you scratched out so much of it? Your mother suggested I keep it short, and quite right, too. I must have rewritten it 20 times by now. I just can't seem to find the right words.
Dean didn't button his shirt properly. It looks like a blood stain, but the seeds indicate otherwise. Ipsa scientia potestas est. Looks like Latin. Your ring sure looks old. It was made for my grandfather. He passed it down to my father, who passed it down to me. And when the time comes, I'll pass it on to my son. The Strousbury family had been champions of education for generations. What does the inscription mean? Knowledge itself is power. The inquisitive spirit is a mighty thing, Jenny. And nothing is as important as the truth. His watch is slow. That's unlike the Dean. He's usually very punctual. Your watch is 45 minutes slow. Is it? Oh my! That explains why there was no cheesecake left in the cafeteria. <laughs> my head's not screwed on today. Thank goodness you noticed, or I'd be late for my meeting with your mother. Oh really? She didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well, of course she wouldn't. It's nothing important. Why are you meeting then? It's just, um, she's helping me finalize my, my plans for, uh... Your party? Yes, that's it. My retirement party. Thank you. Are you okay, Mr. Strasbury? Of course. Now let me just fix my watch before I forget. <laughs> Now, where were we? For the Dean, being covered in plant life was not unusual. His work as a botanist was renowned. Looks like you're carrying some extra baggage today, Mr. Strasbury. Well, I do have a lot on my mind. I was referring to your legs. Oh, thank you. I have been doing my daily calisthenics. No, I, I mean the sticky stuff on your pants. What? Oh! Hitchhikers. I've been working on a new orchid hybrid in my greenhouse. They're beautiful, but the leaves are quite clingy. I will say, I am looking forward to spending more time in the dirt. Dean was a big fan of the Gumboldt Moonbeams. And not just because his son was a prominent figure on the team. Well, a bench warmer anyway. So, what do you think, Jenny? Can you guess what I had for breakfast? Sure, Mr. Strasbury. I've got everything I need to solve this mystery. What did the Dean eat for breakfast? on his shirt and powdered sugar on his tie. The evidence points strongly to the Dean's breakfast consisting of one, maybe two donuts. What else can I tell about the Dean's morning? Dean had neglected to wind his pocket watch. The act of a distracted man. This resulted in his whole routine being thrown off. Which might explain why he has a spoon in his pocket instead of a pen. You had a donut for breakfast. Yes? I'm guessing... Strawberries. 
strawberry. <laughs> How did you know? That part was easy. You always have donuts for breakfast. But something else caught my attention. Oh? I think you have something on your mind, Mr. Strasberry. You are usually a picture of precision and punctuality. But today, there's a spoon in your pocket and your shirt button is undone. My, my. You really are a Leclou. Your father would be so proud. Thanks. Well, I should be going. I'm meeting your son by the lake. <laughs> and I'm meeting your mother in the library. What a small world this is. Too small. A perfectly small world with everything in its right place. Who would want to change that? Pardon? Nothing. See you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Until we meet again, Jenny LeClue. Well, that's not creepy at all. In her short time as a detective, Jenny had learned never to ignore a ringing phone. Hello? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. What? CJ, is that you? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Really? This again? It's me, Jenny. We don't need to do this. I have no idea who you are, and I know no one by that name. The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Fine. The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. Good. The wind blows strongly from the east. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. Excellent. The evening sky is full of fireflies. The absent-minded goldfish swims into the blender. Ah! Jenny, it is you! Of course it is! I need to meet with you right away. Okay. Where do you want to meet? This place will do. Everyone in town knew that CJ was mad, even dangerous. He's not dangerous. He just doesn't accept things at face value. Sure, he's a bit fixated on extraterrestrials, but at least he's passionate about something. CJ and Jenny certainly indulged each other's obsessions. But most of all, CJ treated Jenny like a colleague. And not a little kid. CJ, why did we go through all that if you're right here? Can't be too careful. Are you sure you weren't followed? Who would be following me? Shh! This place is compromised. We don't have long to talk. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? What? You called me! Did I? Why? Talking to CJ was a bit like navigating a maze. You had a rough idea of where you were headed, but you couldn't be sure you'd ever get there. I'll help you figure it out. with strange symbols where the cardinal direction should be. Looks broken. Where did you get that compass? Ah, you spotted it! I knew you would. It belonged to my father. He left it to me to find the truth. You're not going to find anything with that. The needle is wandering all over the place. A bit like you. It's searching. For what? For them. 
It's this town, Jenny. It's Arthur. They're here, among us. And this proves it. Or it could just be broken. Could be. I guess we'll never know. It's your birthday, CJ. Birthday? Whose birthday? Kaixen's birthday. But Kaixen died on his birthday. Assassination? Possibly. Abduction? Almost certainly! CJ, the card? Oh, this. It's for you. Impossible shot. Died instantly. No suspects. No human suspects, anyway. Thanks, CJ. That's, uh, thoughtful. I didn't think you'd remember. I know what it's like to lose something important to you. Now triple shred and incinerate that card as soon as possible! It's got my fingerprints all over it! What's that sticking out of your sock? Ah! That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I intercepted a secret message. Classified intel. It's proof, Jenny. It's happening again. It's time for us to join the fight. This doesn't look like the kind of pamphlet he usually makes. It's being professionally printed. Could CJ finally be on to something? Oh, it's just part of a cereal box. A cereal box from another space-time continuum? Nope, just a regular cereal box. It's an ad for a toy. But why? Why would it just be lying there in the trash? I'm sorry, CJ. There are still great mysteries out there to solve. But this isn't one of them. So what's the plan now? Library. Research. Very important. Very hush-hush. They let you back in? Not yet. But I've got this hat now. It wasn't your head that needed covering. No, for disguise! I know, CJ. What is it this time? More UFOs? Radio wave mind control? A globally connected communication network used exclusively to view pictures of cats? Jenny, you sound crazy. I'm just preparing my defense for the hearing. Is this because you tried to hypnotize Mrs. Brown's prize poodle? No. That was last week. It's because I peed in the water tower. CJ, that's gross. And this is the thanks I get for saving everyone from the mind control chemicals? Well, I guess I'll see you later then. But CJ was gone. CJ, I know you're standing behind the phone booth. I just watched you walk over there. No, I'm not. Okay, then. Bye. See you later. Hey! Ah! Damn. That's the third time today. Oops. Hi, Jenny. Great job solving that case today. It's really cute, the way that you and your mom work together. I wish I was that close with my parents. Enough chit-chat. Got anything new for me? Oh, yes. This is the real deal, hot off the press. I haven't had a chance to distribute these yet, so keep them to yourself. Ada and Jenny belonged to one of the oldest societies in Arthurton. An eclectic band of treasure hunters, collectors, creators, and dealers. Together, they were known as... Sticker Club! For generations, Gumbold students had been hiding and finding stickers all over town. Officially, Jenny was too young to join. But she'd found so many stickers on her own that they'd made her an honorary member. Let's see. 
Nice crisp edges, rich colors, very tacky. Thanks, I spent all week making these. If only you spend as much time in your schoolwork, you might not be failing my mom's class. Uh, Jenny thought to herself. It's to celebrate the Dean's retirement. I'm super sad that he's leaving, but... It's a perfect reason to make new stickers. Exactly. Oh, we're going on an epic sticker hunt before the Dean's party. You should join us. Even if Jenny had wanted to join them. And I don't. She knew she'd be stuck with her cousin all weekend. Thanks, but I work alone. Oh, okay. See you around, Jenny. Lake Nowhere, one mile. Stop! Perfect! Hold it right there! Okay, let her go. Oh dear. That was ominous. Detective for Hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping her mom at Gumbolt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case.